about to start cleaning this waterfall dresser. It's going to be one that I'm going to paint this week, and I'll show you some of the colors of paint that I'm going to use. But I wanted to show you some of the things that you can run into and what um, sort of my ideas, my husband's ideas, what I've learned from other painters, what some of the options are if you find something like this. This probably should have been put in the dumpster. I uh, paid $10 for it, which is exactly what it was worth at the time, and it's going to take a lot of time and effort to be put into this old piece and love, or I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't love it, to go into this piece to make it be what I envision it to be. And uh, just as a reminder, if you see the word live in a red box at the top, you've caught me live. If not, you're on the replay. And if you have any questions or comments, just write them below. And if I don't see them, get to them now. It'll send me notifications and I'll definitely answer them later. But I'm hoping I have my uh, phone on a tripod and I have my ring light set up. But I have a couple of things that I want to show you and I hope that I can do it well with the phone on the tripod because the, I'm sort of working in a larger space. Back behind uh, the dresser is the red table that uh, Amy from Favored Nest and I will be putting the stencil on tomorrow so I definitely don't want to get any of this on it. This is the TSP base cleaner uh, white lightning from Dixie Bell and that's what I'm going to use to clean this with but I wanted to uh, show you a couple of other things first. The, when you have a very, very thin piece of wood that's put on a composite wood or a plywood or what other kind of wood piece and they put this on there, that's uh, called veneer. We talked about veneer before, but I'm gonna to try to turn this around. Let me see if I can flip this up enough for you to see. If you're a furniture painter too, this, um, I have a link for these little rollers. Can you see them down there at the bottom? I have four of them. Those each hold like 250 pounds a piece. They're tiny. My husband thinks they're ridiculous because he uses big furniture movers. But for um, somebody like me who doesn't like things too big and bulky, you'll be able to see in just a minute that I can roll this thing around ever how I want to on those little things. And I think I paid six or seven dollars a piece for them. But I wanted to show you on this uh, veneer and that's whenever they're wanting to use the fancy looking wood but make the piece not cost so much. And the veneer was chipping off of here and rather than try to go back in and put glue in all these areas and repair all the different chips that were on here I just, because this has been out in the weather that I wasn't told it had been out in the weather but you know you can sometimes tell that it's not from heat it's not from uh, it's it's from moisture whenever you get as much uh, chipping of the veneer as there was on here and remember the veneer is just the little thin pieces of pretty wood that they put on top of the cheap wood so what we did was use a straight edge which was just a an old sign to put across here mark it and then cut it with a like a like a box cutter or a utility knife in order to get a straight edge and there are several options that you can do once you get it to here you can use uh wood putty and try to put it on here as smooth as you can put it and then come back and sand it and try to sand at that edge you can put bondo which is what a lot of the girls use uh that redo furniture, which is automotive uh, repair stuff. They have a wood filler that's similar to Bondo, which is probably what I will do. Or I'm thinking about uh, having my husband make me a piece of um, molding to go back here and just cover this up with that. So you can use, you know, diff different methods of, uh, of repairing this. The fronts of the drawers um, I'll show you too, but I wanted to show you on the inside some of the other things you can run across. The right here in the drawers, let me see if I can pull a little closer. There's some little indentations, and that's where there were some little triangular clips originally that are called uh, drawer stops that go in there that prevent, if you've ever had an old dresser and, it, and all the drawers go in too far, that's because a lot of times the drawer stop has came out. So there's a couple of different things you can do if, when your drawer stop comes out. And that's take your Dremel tool if you have one and drill out uh, 
a little well you can find these if you can find them somewhere they don't have them anywhere around here but uh, you can take your Dremel tool and drill out a space for a penny to fit in there and have your penny stick out maybe a quarter of an inch or so and that's enough for the the depth of the penny to go down in there deep enough to hold it solid and that will prevent that's the width of the front of your drawer face and that'll prevent the drawer from going in too far so you can do the penny you can get some more drawer stops or you can do what we're going to do in this instance see if i can get around to this side see this this is another um, piece of the wood that goes on the inside that's uh supposed to be fitted in there that's not fitted so a lot of times if your drawers aren't working right you're going to run across something like this as well and you can tell that the last person who had this or the person before that for all i know um tried to repair this just by putting a nail in there and in the back on that side there's a nail so they tried to make a drawer stop out of putting a nail back there and what we're going to do is put what's called dead wood. When you have a piece of wood that doesn't really go to anything, it's just gonna go across the back and be there to prevent the drawer from going all the way back or in any instance that, it, that the, you just have a piece of wood that goes across, it can, it can sturdy up the dresser. This needs sturdying up a little as well, but uh, you can nail to it. It's not something that's structurally necessary and needed in there. So we're gonna put um, some dead wood in the back to be a, a drawer stop for that. And here, let me see if I can roll it any closer. I left one of, or put one of the drawers back in so you could see, see how that's kind of going in and out. There's space behind the veneer on this as well. This is probably a 32nd of an inch thick piece of, of veneer. And it was originally glued down, but due to you know years and weather this is called a waterfall dresser from they made these from the 20s to the 40s how it comes across the rounded edge at the top here and uh so this needs to be repaired um i want to use wood glue my husband recommends that i just use super glue and and skip because it'll stick faster if we use wood glue we're gonna have to put something on it clamp it down and let it sit overnight so I'll let you know what we decide on that. But I just wanted to show you a lot of times when you do see something that has some damage like that, don't pay too much for it just because it's an antique or, or something from the 20s or 40s. But if it has good bones and good structure and you can get it for free or for $10 or something like I did, then it's worth investing the time and the effort to give it some love and bring it, bring it back to life. So the first thing that definitely has to be done with this you can also see where somebody else went over with some stain in a few of the areas trying to give it back its original look well i'm a furniture painter and this piece is i'm not a furniture refinisher that's going to try to bring this back to its original wood state my husband would do something like that because he he prefers working with the original wood but um this thing's going to be blue and teal and purple and have uh, a lot of colors and things on it i'm going to use a prima transfer on it i'm gonna do all kinds of fun things on it and and share those things with you so that um if you've never used a transfer or you've never uh known what to do with the veneer hopefully you'll be able to do that but i've got my um dixie bell white lightning in here and i'm doing what i'm supposed to do today using my glove down in the thing i'm trying to set a good example here but um not only does this clean the piece, I want to show you one more thing. These are the handles. This is what kind of handles and hardware it had on it to begin with. One was broken and the other one was still whole, but we took it off. This this one was originally screwed in. Somebody had went back and tried to nail this in. Somebody's papa tried to fix their mama's dresser, I'm sure. Um, but there's, let me see if I can make this one real quick keep you too long today this can you see here hey amber um how shiny this is right here that was behind that wooden handle that shows originally in the 20s what this piece looked like it was shiny and had a you know a probably a shellac finish but it's definitely been in a home where there's smoke or two because that's nicotine uh that's coming off there and it's going to take a lot of scrubbing because there's 
I don't know if you can see there, it's sort of, um, you can tell that underneath there's layers of wax, I guess is, hey, that's uh, what I'm trying to say here. So it's going to take a, a good bit of cleaning. You wouldn't be able to just um, wipe this off with a rag and have it clean enough for your paint to stick. It's just not going to do it. So the TSP or the, uh, see that? Uh, the white mountain from uh, Dixie Bell is, is really, really important. This is a step that you just can't skip. I know a lot of people say, oh, with the chalky paints and things like that, you can just go right over everything. Not if you don't want yellow coming through. And this would bleed through. And that's what would happen if you used your chalk paint over this right now it would look beautiful and tomorrow you would come in and you may see some of that's coming through if not you'd put your second coat on there and put your top coat in and then the next day you would come in and all that effort would have been wasted because it's uh it's going to bleed through but not only does this um get that old waxy residue and uh nicotine and all that stuff off of here but it also gives a slight um deglazing that's the word i'm trying to think of it also a little bit like the area where i showed you where it was shiny right there it won't it'll have a little bit of grab to it where it uh, would not have had any grab had we just went right to it and i can tell i'm gonna have to rub on this a little bit because it's uh there's many many years of lemon pledge or something on there that uh where it was well loved in its past life but there's if you look at this real close too there's a lot of chips in this veneer and some furniture painters would want to repair all those chips and some there's all my colors of paint I decided to use. And some people would distress it in those areas with your little bit of sandpaper later on to um, make it look like you meant for it to be that way. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not trying to bring this back to its original glory of wood. I'm trying to give it a new life to people who like distressed and chalk painted furniture. And in my mind, it's going to be beautiful, so I hope my mind is right. But man, it's, it's, you couldn't even tell that all that was on there by looking at it. It, 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 but it is. And before I, uh, sell it, I will go over all of the drawers. I think I'm going to paint the sides of the drawers as well. I'm not going to do that today, but I, I think as part of my finishing touches on here that, um, I'm going to either paper or paint or something the sides of the drawers to be that extra little finishing touch. And these drawers are oak, actually, there. You can probably see a little more of the texture. See all those tiny, tiny, tiny little lines going across there? That's, uh, for one, that's an oak figure. And for two, whenever they're tiny like that, that's called quarter sawn. And for every... Uh, large log that you have there's only four of those in there the boards that look like that so it's very surprising they're usually saved to make veneer and to make the front pieces and things like that so it was uh, in its day a very well made piece of furniture because uh the oak trees are you know more expensive to cut down pine trees grow very fast to get an oak tree big enough to give you a whole lot of uh quarter sawn wood you know it probably has to grow 100 years where a pine tree would have to grow 20. so and a pine tree is called a soft wood so it, it doesn't make as sturdy a furniture as does uh oak and cherry and the hardwoods that's why oak costs more but anyway, so that's what I'm going to continue to do today is get this thing clean. It's definitely going to take a lot longer than I anticipated. I had no idea it had the nicotine on it. You can't see that with the, uh, the old finish. Turn it back around that way. But uh, So I'm going to continue to do that. And uh, the plan was to get... Um, at least the first coat of paint on here today but I've been up since 3 this morning and I don't 
the creative things, I like to do them when my mind is fresh. So I may or may not get any paint on here today. I may wait till tomorrow and let this, this dry overnight. Because it may even need a uh, second cleaning. You know what I mean? Let's see if I can get on there. Uh, as dirty as this is and as much as, uh, as is coming off of it, it may um, be a smart thing for me to do to let it sit overnight and see if I can go back over it in the morning and, and get any more of the residue off because I don't want to put my heart into trying to make it into, you know, something that somebody will love and then have the bleed through come through. Normally you wouldn't want, you know, to be wiping your, your wood piece down with uh, water if you were trying to save the wood. But that's that's not our goal. And I I, wanted, I thought I was going to be able to whip this piece out in about three days, but it looks like uh, there's going to be a little more effort how to go to go into it. I wanted to show you one more thing. This is so I'm rolling around. This is called an inlay. And that's when normally, if this was a very artistic piece, that's when they normally would take tiny pieces of veneer and cut them out in different colors and inlay them in there like a puzzle. And Eric said, oh, that, you know, has an inlay, which it technically it is because it is inlaid between these two edges of the piece. But he's like, I would save that, but I don't think it, I, I haven't 100% made up my mind. I don't think it's going to look good with uh, my blue. Plus down here now, I just saw that there's some damage where some of it is scraped off. So this this is paper, paper thin. So this is going to be painted over is what's going to happen there. You can see some of it scratched off there. That's almost like that was painted on. So that's not a traditional where some furniture artist cut out tiny little wedges and, and placed them all in there like a puzzle. That's a, either a painted on are very very thin piece so one long printed on strip not one a bunch of small strips put in but that's something else you would look for and make a decision on whenever you're working on your piece is whether or not it has an inlay and then snooping at it closer because I too thought it was an inlay to, uh, to see whether or not it's an actual inlay whether it's painted on whether it has any damage and whether you want to whether it's going to match your piece and you want to try to save it or whether you're going to pretend it's not there, clean it up and paint over it, which is what's going to happen to this one. Again, if you have any questions or if you uh, want to keep up with the progress, I'm going to be working on it a little bit by a little bit every day and I'll come on and show you when it's something new, a new technique. Look how nasty that is. Uh, when it's a new technique or something that I'm using that I think would be uh, beneficial to somebody, I'll let you know. And uh, I appreciate you checking in, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.